tonight. I, I'm going to be very honest. I, my flesh is super nervous. It sure is. But it, the, the inside, the part that God saved, I have a sweet peace, and I thank the Lord for that. And I was, I was on the way here, Anna was driving, I was, I was studying on even just the Passover, Exodus 12. And uh, we pulled in the parking lot. God just put a completely different thought on our heart. And he tends to do that for some reason because he, he knows who needs to hear what. So if you've got your Bibles, let's go ahead and turn to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. I, I've been studying on this, uh, but he's, he's just put this very heavy on our heart. And, and I want us to, to, to look at something uh, from, from the perspective of two people. And then look at it from your, your perspective, I guess you could say. So Matthew chapter 26 I want to thank the church uh, for the prayers, the support. It, it means more to me than I could ever tell you. I, and and, I, and I, I do feel the prayers. I do feel the support. And thank you for that. And I ask you to continue to pray for us because there's a whole lot I don't know. The only thing I do know is the Lord, and that's all we need to know. See, I'll pray for me as, even as we go from here that, that all that would be done is, is that, that Christ would get the glory. And even as Brother Brent mentioned, that all the things that have happened in my life, it, it sure enough is not because of me. It's because of what that song Rock of Ages just sung about. It's because of Jesus. Because He showed me I was lost and showed me my need of Him. And He saved me the very moment I trusted Christ. So you give Him all the glory, every bit of it. But if you've got your Bibles, let's go ahead and turn to Matthew 26. And before we read, I do want to ask, uh, let's go ahead and pray, okay? So let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank You for this day. Lord, thank You for all that You are and all that You do. And Lord, thank you for Jesus, most of all. Lord, you've given your only begotten Son for, for my sin and, and everybody's sin so that we could be saved. And Lord, I thank you that Christ was buried and that third day he rose again. And Lord, because Jesus lives, Lord, your word tells us that we have a hope. And it's a living hope. And I'm thankful we can enjoy that hope in this life and also in the life to come, Father. And Lord, we pray for those that do not know Jesus as their Savior. Lord, I pray that they, they would come to realize that it's your will for them to be saved. You want them to be saved. And Lord, I pray they would stop running from you, Lord, but simply let go of the ropes and trust in Christ alone and let you do the saving, Father. And again, I ask for your help tonight, Lord, as we, we try to read a portion of your word, Father. I know without you, Lord, I cannot do anything. So I pray you fill my mouth with the words to speak. And Lord, that everything that would be done, that you would get the glory. And again, we pray this in Jesus' name, for he's worthy. Amen. Amen. Matthew 26, I want to start reading in verse 1. I will go down to about verse 16. So start in Matthew 26, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility and kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always." For in that she hath poured out this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the world, <clears throat> in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests, and said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted, covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. So let's go back to verse, verses 1 and 2. Jesus is talking to his disciples here. And he says in verse 2, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. And so the Passover was something that the Jews practiced. So we read about that in Exodus 12. To be honest, that's what I wanted to speak on tonight, but God had a different direction. Okay, in, in Exodus 12, we read about how the, the Jews would take this lamb. It, it couldn't be any lamb. It had to be a lamb without blemish, without spot. It had to be perfect. Okay, they would take this lamb. Uh, first, they would observe it. For, from the 10th day to the 14th day of that month. They had to make sure that this was a spotless lamb. Then on that 14th day, they would have to, to, to kill the lamb and put the blood on the doorposts. Okay, now that was the Passover. If the blood was on the doorpost, God would pass over that house and not smite the firstborn. Now this is what Jesus is speaking of. He said that that's coming up in two days. Okay? So if I did the math right, we're somewhere between the 10th day and the 14th day of that month. It's not quite the Passover. Okay, they haven't killed the lamb yet. 
And he goes on to say, And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Jesus is speaking about what's about to happen. In two days, he is going to be crucified, just like that lamb did. Just like they took that lamb and they killed it. With that, that's what's happening to Christ. And the neat thing, I'm not going to get into tonight, but they, they killed the lamb in the evening. Okay, Jesus was crucified in the evening. That's not by accident. God perfectly put that together. But let's keep going. Starting in verse 3. We read of, of, of these chief priests and these scribes and the elders. Uh, th that's also called the Sanhedrin Council. So they're, they're getting together and they're trying to come up with a plan to, to betray Jesus. And we read in verse 4. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility and kill him. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. They said, we can't do it on the feast day because there, uh, a, a havoc, a, a ruckus will come up. Now, that was bad for the Jews because if there was any uproar, any riots, the Romans would step in and really uh, make life miserable for them. So they said, we've got to do this secretly. We've got to crucify him. Okay? Now, what I would like, to, 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 by God's help, to look at today is, is Mary, which we're about to read about, and then Judas. Okay? And the question I want to pose is, is what is Christ worth to you? What, what is Christ truly worth to you? And, and, and I don't want to get mis to get confused with this, you, you cannot buy salvation by any means. Salvation is by grace through faith. And the Bible is so plain about that, and I thank the Lord for that. But what is He worth to you? Okay, so in verse 6, it says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto Him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on His head as He sat at meat. But when His disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? So putting this in perspective, the disciples of Jesus, they're, they're at Simon's house, they're eating, uh, they're, they're at meat, that means they're eating, and this woman comes in and, and breaks this alabaster box of ointment and, and anoints the body of Jesus. Now in my mind, I would be thinking, what is she doing? What in the world is going on? Now, <clears throat> a little bit of, of, of stuff about this, this ointment, it says it's very precious. The word precious there means it's costly. It required a lot of effort to get it. And this ointment is not something you put on just a rash or a mosquito bite. It is, it is very costly to get it. And I, I tried to, to do a little bit of research on just what this is. I, and I think it's in the, the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of John. They, they called it spikenard. Okay, and spikenard, it, it was about 300 pence. We don't use that today. But in, in our time, it would be a year's wages. An entire year's wages. So think about it. If you make $3,000 a month, times that by 12, that's what, 36 in our equivalency, that would be $36,000 just for this ointment. And so this woman came in, and regardless of the price, she broke it and anointed the body of Jesus. Okay? And, and something I want you to think about is, is verse 8. It said, but when his disciples saw it, they had indignation. Okay, how do you define indignation? indignation? Look at two younger brothers that, that, that fight with each other. That's pretty much what it means. It's to be mad, to be just fumous. Okay, and then they said, to what purpose is this waste? They said what she just did was wasteful. She wasted all that ointment. Okay, now, in Jesus' response, he would go on to say in verse 10, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. And I just want you guys to, to, to first see that she didn't care. She didn't care how much it was worth. She was willing to pour it out all for Christ. Okay, now let's, let's, let's go down and look at Judas, okay? Look at his perspective. Verse 14, Matthew 26, 14. It says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give me? You see what he said? What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. Judas's perspective, his thoughts was, What can I get out of this? If you want to be honest, sometimes that's, that's, that's mine. That's my perspective. Especially before I trusted Christ. What can I get out of this? And that's the perspective of the world we live in. What can they get? What can we get? Okay? And then after that, in verse 15, it says, And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Now this word covenanted, if you've ever seen a triple beam balance scale, it's a really old scale they used to use in chemistry labs. It's got a little scale on one side. You had to move the weights to balance it out. Okay, that's what this word is speaking of. It's to put something on to see how much it's worth. Okay, so they are, they're, they're talking together to figure out how much is Christ worth to them. And Judas sold Christ out for... 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. To put that in perspective, that is the same price for a slave. Okay, that, that is the same exact price for a slave. So what was, what was Christ worth to Judas? Nothing. Nothing. He was worth a slave. 
Okay? So we see this woman, which will be identified as Mary, she didn't care about the price. She was willing to, to pour all out for Christ. But Judas, he, he was not. So with that in mind, let's, let's turn to Mark 14. Mark chapter 14. <clears throat> and so this is the same account, written a little bit differently, but the same message. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, starting at verse 3. It says, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? For she hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. Notice verse 8. It says, She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the burial. I love that. It says, she, she has done all that she could. Not for salvation. Not for salvation, but because she is saved. She did all that she could for Christ. That's, that is from Mary's perspective. Now let's look at it from Judas' eyes. So John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John 12, look at verse 3. I know this is the same account. We're reading it over and over. I just want us to, to understand what's going on in this account. So uh, we, we clearly see what's going on. John chapter 12, verse 3, it says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence, and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. So now you see why Judas would even say, let's just give it to the poor. His heart was not in giving it to the poor. It, the, the Bible says that, that in verse 6, that, but because he was a thief. See, see, Judas was all motivated by what he could get. What he could get out of, out of that relationship, I guess you could say. And see, we would later learn that he sold Christ out for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. So how does that relate to us today? I want to re-ask the question, what is Christ worth to us? What is he worth to us? Okay, so let's turn back to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. <clears throat> so Matthew 26, you see in verse 7 that, that Mary, as it says the woman, but in, in the Gospel of John it says it's Mary. That she came in and broke this alabaster box, poured it all over the body of Jesus to anoint him. How is it with us as saved individuals? Are, are, are we Judas? Are we Judas? Are we, are we like Mary? Are, are we selling out to follow the things of this world? 30 pieces of silver? Are we, are we pouring out for Christ? Are we giving of ourselves for Christ? Okay? That's what I want us to think about. But notice again in, in, in verse 15, Judas said, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted him, with him for 30 pieces of silver. Judas was not concerned uh, uh, for Christ. As you see here, he was more concerned about what he could get out of this. What can he get? But I'll turn, turn it just a little bit different. I am so thankful to the Lord that I'm not worth to him 30 pieces of silver. I praise God for that. Okay, because in 1 Peter, let's go ahead and turn there. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. In verse 18 it says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19 of 1 Peter 1. It says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God, or raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. 
So think about it in, in this perspective that Judas sold Christ out for 30 pieces of silver. I am so thankful that I'm, more, I'm worth more to the Lord than 30 pieces of silver. Because it says in verse 18, it says, uh, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed. The word redeem means a price is given to buy a slave. What was the price for a slave? 30 pieces of silver. God didn't give 30 pieces of silver to save me. What he did in verse 19, it says, But with the precious blood of Christ. That word precious is the same word that's in Matthew 26. It means very costly. It means a lot. The very precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. See, I, I thank the Lord that I'm, I'm, I'm worth more to Him than 30 pieces of silver because He sent His only begotten Son to die for me so that I could be saved. And the amazing thing is, is He didn't just do that for me, but He did that for you. Okay, now Jesus said that wherever the gospel will go in the whole world, that, that woman had that memorial for. The word gospel means good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. The good news that he, he, he died on that cross, that He was buried, and that third day He rose again. Why was that stone rolled away? Not to let Jesus out, but so that we know that, that Jesus rose again from the grave. Jesus didn't need that stone moved out of the way. He could have gone right through it if He wanted to, and I believe He did. But that stone was rolled away to prove to us that He is alive today. Okay, and, and, and we're bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You say, well, wait, I, I want to be saved. I want that. I want to, to be bought by the precious blood of Christ. I know God loves me. How, how, do I, how, do I have a, how am I covered by the blood? How? Romans 3. Okay, let's turn to Romans 3. These are some scriptures somebody shared to me when I was struggling with salvation. And, and, it, and it meant a lot to me. It really did mean a lot to me. Romans chapter 3. So how can I be covered by the blood? Just like in, in the Passover, how they put the blood over the door and God passed over that house. How can I be saved? It says in Romans 3, verse 19, it says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The first thing you must realize is that you are a sinner. That was the hardest part for me. Because in verse 18 it says, every mouth may be stopped. You know, in teaching public education, you hear a lot of funny things. I like you give out a homework assignment and then they'll come up with some excuse as to why they didn't do it. But it's not going to be like that with the Lord in, in our sin. He said that every mouth is going to be stopped. We are proven guilty. We are proven guilty. Okay, there, there's there no room for question. I'm not just saying you, but it's me too. And it says in verse 20, for by the law is the knowledge of sin that God convicts you, shows you that you are a sinner. But then, thank the Lord for the rest of these verses. In verse 21, it says, But now the righteousness of God, without the law, is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I believe that word all includes, includes all. That's, that's, that's everybody. We, we have sinned. And falling short of the glory of God. But you see, it has a little semicolon at the end of verse 23. That means that God's not done. <laughs> He's got something else to say. He says, verse 24, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So just like Judas betrayed Christ for 30 pieces of silver, I praise God that he didn't do that to us. I praise God that he did not, but rather he gave his only begotten son so that we could have a relationship with him, so that we could be saved. And the Bible says that we, we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We have not met God's standard. But it also says that we're justified freely. It means you don't have to bring a price. You come broken just the way you are because that's the way God saves Right? You, you being justified freely, but it says by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What's that word redemption mean? A price given for a slave. Okay? It's not 30 pieces of silver, but it was the precious blood of Jesus Christ that, that God saves us. And it said in verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. See, like I said, it, it, it's not the 30 pieces of silver, it's, it's faith in His blood, and then God does all the saving. So again, I ask the question, what is Christ worth to you? Okay, think about it in the lenses of Mary. She was willing to pour all that she could out for Christ. 
You can't serve Christ. You can't serve the Lord until you know Him. Until you have a relationship with Him. Right? Or are we like, more like Judas? Are we, are we saying that, yeah, I'm a Christian out here, but in here, I'm so far from Him? Are we more concerned about what can I get out of this? Can I get this? Can I get that? And we're selling out for 30 pieces of silver. Now, I'm going to be honest. Uh, we're teaching public education. I, I see a lot uh, of young people choosing the 30 pieces of silver. Okay? This girl, this guy, this group, that group. Okay? This sin, that sin. It's not worth it. It's not. It's not. Don't sell out for the 30 pieces of silver. Rather, follow Jesus. Be like Mary. Be poured out used, to be used by the Lord for His glory. And y'all pray for me that I would be like that. I wouldn't be like Judas selling out for the 30 pieces of silver, but be more like Mary that's being willing to be poured out like that ointment for God to use for His glory. And again, if you're struggling with salvation, I'm thankful that God's given us the answer. Okay? He's given us the answer. And He said that you can be bought by the precious blood of Jesus. How am I saved? When God shows you that, just like when you know you're hungry, God shows you that you're, you're lost. You simply trust Him. You do an about face and you put your faith in Jesus and He does all the saving. And praise God that He does. He's worthy of the glory. And again, thank you guys for being here. We'll ask for a verse of a song, Brother Steve. <clears throat> if you have anything on your heart, please uh, feel free to come make it known. Uh, but more than talking with it about me, talk to it about the Lord. Talk to the Lord about it. He can help you with it.